This is a Power 98.7 podcast. Now we're talking. Subscribe to Power 98.7 podcasts in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. There's more on power987.co.za. My next guest is Annabelle uh, Labete. And Annabelle is going to talk to us about... Annabelle, of course, is from Samro. And we're going to be talking about... Um, uh, a survey that was done, right? And a survey that looks into gender equality in South Africa's live music industry. Now, live music industry. Who would be in the live industry uh, sector? Because the industry is huge. The industry is huge, and you would have just seen that here we've got two artists in that particular space. So we've got performers, you've got on stage, you've got backstage, and there's there's various, various roles within that particular space. And then there is uh, um, various research, and it wouldn't be only in South Africa, studies done across the world, really, uh, putting spotlight on the significant gender inequalities, disparities in what generally would be then music work. And South Africa is no different. And I think sometimes the results also would be no different as well. But here, yeah, Samro would have done a research of this particular nature, not for the first time. Uh, also in, what was it, 2021, 2022, I can remember. And at that particular time, an investigation then towards providing solutions to the barriers of early, you know, of entry experience into, uh, you know, the industry as well. At that particular point, it was called Women's Rights and Representation in the Music Industry. This time, it's changed a little bit. Uh, and um, the survey then done to uh, look at look at live uh, uh, music. What's the difference? Uh, I think there's a massive difference in essence uh, as to who's engaged in that particular space. Samro CEO Annabelle Labete, I'm going to bring her in. Annabelle, welcome to Power 98.7, I should be saying. Welcome again to Power 98.7, I should be saying. Welcome to Power Perspective. <laughs> How are you, Annabelle? <laughs> happy to be back, Denzel. I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm happy, happy to, to be, be back in power. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be back. Annabelle, how was that experience? Oh my goodness! I'm so I'm so given every minute of it. Uh, <laughs> I see myself in that studio. <laughs> was, in this very in this very seat, yeah. One of my highlights for the year. Honestly, it was it was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. I guess not. I don't have enough words to sum up how wonderful an experience it was. It really was amazing. Sure. And you guys do a good job, I must say. That's what you do. The, the the other thing, Annabelle, the other thing, though, is, you know, I mean, as as, as much as we, we are celebrating, I, I hate using the terminology, you know, that, that mm-hmm. goes with, with, with whenever we talk, you know, it, about women and advancement and right. aspirations, I hope using about celebrating women, we should never be doing that. It should just be a natural, natural it thing. It should be normal. Where, y- y- yeah. y- that's it. And, and, and so... So, sorry for pausing there because I just <laughs> I just find it so awkward uh, yeah, in my personal yeah. space when I when I almost it's almost like saying you know the first black person to do this I feel it's so exactly. down, it's so degrading in essence because it yeah. take it makes you suddenly and puts you in a category you know as as hmm. the first person in this category mm-hmm, to go and mm-hmm. yeah but but Annabella uh, yeah keep on going sorry I was just gonna say I, I think the flip side of it though uh, Denzel is that. If we don't take a um, a centralizing approach yes. to the issues that women face in general in yeah. life, you know, we we will I think we would lose the we would lose the fight, and the True. fight will sort of just become dimmed down with other things. Yeah. So I think it's always important to to raise the profile of just what it means to be a woman in South Africa today, yeah. a woman in the world today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and I think that's a that's exactly it, Annabelle. The, the 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 you know if if we didn't feel the awkwardness of the conversation, then there would not be a problem that we need to be engaging. Then you know it it would be just a normal platform, and yeah. we'd be engaging things pretty pretty normal. But uh, yes, we have to use the language, and yes, then we have to engage in in certain things that then project and you know present things mm-hmm. as they mm-hmm. should be and not as they are. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Annabelle, 
at Samro, um, and and I was looking at Samro in in essence as well, uh, just <laughs> just from your exec structures and what 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 goes on there. And and I must say, um, in in the exec structures, there was I'm I'm not sure if it's still still so, but um, there was a time when all women still is Denzel. still is whoa yes. Yeah, look at, yeah, look, yeah, and 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 and, and, and that just means putting putting your money where your mouth is. It is, Denzel, and and I think sometimes again it's about intentionality. Yeah, you know, I think we 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 shouldn't or both shouldn't pay lip service to the things that matter. Um, and I think this board had the foresight and the determination to make sure that you know they 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 bring in an all female C suite. Yeah. And um, I, I hope and I believe that that decision is going to pay dividends uh, going forward. And it also just demonstrates that within a very male-dominated industry, mm-hmm. and that's what the music industry is largely, yeah. that you do have a competent, capable female executives who can lead organizations that have really been part and parcel of the South African uh, creative landscape for many, many years. Yeah. And because previously they were so largely led by males. Yeah. So that shift has to be intentional and it has to be. Sure. Old. And it wants to be deliberate about seeing that transformation happen and what it means for the entire organization going yeah. forward. Yeah. When, when, when you talk about being being deliberate and pursuing that, you know, to an extent that you are deliberate about it. Um, I, I, I see it at Samro and I hear it in your language and I hear it in, in a lot of other places. But, but then there's this big, broader South Africa and we deal with all sorts mm. of things in between and, and, mm. and things fall, fall within the cracks. How, how oh. Annabelle, do we take what you would have navigated and then showcased at Samro, for example, where your executive is concerned, right? And and it's mm-hmm. entirely women. How do you mm-hmm. take that example and then, you know, people begin to play with that and rub off on that and take advantage of mm-hmm. that and, and and leverage on, on that in in an instance where we, we then don't only showcase again the language and saying, you know, at mm-hmm. Samro, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, it happens yeah. like this, but but in 99 yeah. of the other institutions it's not how how do we engage the 1999 yeah. the other yeah. look I, I think it's also about it's also about challenging corporate leadership right mm. i think it's about um questioning decision making at the level of recruitment and bringing in skills yeah and I think once you begin to to take those bold decisions and those bold steps that I mentioned, you know, sort of somebody has to take the bold step and then the rest will follow. Yeah. Um, but And that is not in any way assuming that we are not seeing a, a shift, a massive shift, not only in this particular industry, but I think across various sectors in the South African economy, mm. that there are captains of the industry but you know the as pleasing particularly for JC listed companies, they are grossly underrepresented. Mm. But again it is that deliberateness and that boldness at the level of the those that are charged with governance and mm. that is the board of directors mm. to be to be decisive and mm. to, to be determined in making sure that from a representation point we are achieving those those targets. And so there's also, uh, I, I know there's a conversation about targets and what, you know, our target mindset and the target world and, and yeah. uh, quotas. Yeah. But there's also a world that is about creating these, uh, leveling the playing field and creating the new normal. I don't think we mm. are anywhere near what would be considered as normal in South Africa when you look across different sectors who are the leaders of, of industry and who are the leaders of organizations um, in, in whatever sector they might be. Mm. I don't think we could, we could claim that we have reached the, sort of the, the level of equity that we see, not equality, but mm. equity mm. that we seek to achieve. Sure. Annabelle, I'm, I'm going to ask you this I, I, um, because it, I'm, I'm just thinking it's just come into my, my headspace now. Yeah. Other people would 
you know, some people, and, and, mm-hmm. and sometimes you hear it amongst women uh, themselves who would then say, you know what, sometimes our worst enemies within corporates, within all of these spaces, are women mm-hmm. themselves. Right. They, they, right. They, 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 they climb up on the backs of these men, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. they know mm-hmm. how the system works. Mm-hmm. And so there's this system of men and the uniqueness of the position mm-hmm. they hold and not to go and f- create friction and sure. whatever. Um, they, the status quo then remains because, mm-hmm. you know, th- they have achieved. Do you do you just say, you know, it's rubbish, 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 because um, women will understand the fight and the plight of other women and they will mm-hmm. drag other women up as they as they, you know, can and will. So how, how mm-hmm. do you how do you what do you make of some of those particular statements that that are made that sometimes women are. Uh, other women's worst enemy within yeah. within yeah. corporates. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, Denzel, I know that two things can be true at the same time. True, yeah. And I know that um, my lived experience might be very different from the next woman's lived yeah. experience. And, and I'll make an example. I, I credit my career to, to four women specifically mm. who were... Who, who I hold up as having shaped and crafted and molded. And, you know, there's a, there's a, you were talking with uh, your guest earlier on, and they were talking about the Bible. Mm. And there's a verse in the Bible that talks Thank about Thank you for listening, Annabelle. <laughs> it's like I'm a power family member. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be on the show. I've always wanted to be on your show. Anyway. Mm. <laughs> I really, really, I, I, I yeah, power's in my DNA. So, so then, Annabelle, um, Annabelle, pause yeah. a little bit, and I don't want you to lose your thread there. But, sure. but, the, the next invite is to get you here in studio. Gladly, gladly. Brilliant, brilliant. Tell me when. Okay. Gladly, anytime. Yeah. Um, so I was saying that, the, the, so, so, so women have really been, one had to sharpen me and make me better and, and prepare me for bigger roles. Others mm. had, had been gentle in their approach with me. And, and really, my lived experience is that I mm. had really strong women who saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. Mm. You know, but I also know that the converse is also true that in some instances, women share experiences about how in certain spaces it's actually the opposite where it's not the women that are their biggest supporters, Mm. where it's not women who are rooting for them, Mm. where it's not women who are, you know, um, paving paving it forward for them, Mm. right? Mm. So, and and, and you would never be able to take away somebody's experience when they really yeah. talk about mm. how difficult the spaces have been for them, whereas it was the men who helped them to get to where they needed to get to, right? Mm. Mm. So so these two live side by side because our realities are very different. Our What brings us into these positions is also very different, you know. Um, some women will talk about how and one of my, my mentors always relates the story where she went into a very big law firm, mm. you know, and she was setting up one of the um, divisions in there. And she was saying that w- what was not interesting for her is that there was an expectation that now she's, you know, this is a boys club. Yeah. So the boys every Saturday or whenever, the boys are praying together. Yeah. And she's like, but I did not want to be in that space. Mm. But you see, then you also move into these spaces where the, it, it, it's generalized behavior mm. that you need to into yeah you know, and she just said that space was yeah. not for me i could not relate in that space i could not because i, I don't fit into that mode for some other women it would work well mm. you know so so we are we are women we're diverse and you want to be different in whatever space or hat or shoes that we wear and it doesn't mean that either one of those is wrong mm. it's just that we have different approaches to the roles that we play um in the world of work and that's sure. that's fine that's normal yeah I, just before I get into um, you know the the content of of the um, study that was that's that's been commissioned and the research and mm-hmm. all all of this, um, you know the the, the I I'll just want to relay something to you. The, the the biggest the biggest influences of my life of my career have been mm-hmm. women. I mm-hmm. you know there's Pippa Green in the early stages yeah. of my journalistic yeah. career. If she hadn't set the foundations as I, as as I see them today, and then Pumzilem yeah. Lambunguka, you know yeah. who who then becomes my my boss at at a much mm-hmm. later stage, and mm-hmm. and instills in me something that I would never ever forget. And she said, Denzel, if you empower 
the women in any household, you empower the entire household. Yes. Yes. But if you empower maybe the, the man in that household, not that you mustn't, not yes. that you mustn't, um, it, it generally doesn't feed down as, as, the, as what the woman yes. would have seen yes. and her collective use of that empowerment yes. to generate within that entire family. Right. Right. And I understood the it. The impact is wider. The yeah. impact is much wider. Yeah, yeah. I understood it. Definitely. I really, really did understand it. But, but just getting to 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 a point of then going back, and I'll take you back, Annabel, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, study mm-hmm. commissioned then by Samro, women's rights and representation in the mm-hmm. music industry. So mm-hmm. it revealed underrepresentation of women within the music sector. It spoke about exclusion from key decision making positions. Um, you know that women face yes. numerous challenges and being marginalized and and it was an investigation in essence towards providing solutions to the barriers of entry um mm-hmm. experienced and then I look at this one um and I see pretty much the same language sure yeah, different time, different space um mm-hmm. few years later on um just maybe you know a a bigger um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Sample that that was mm-hmm, used, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. the kind of results speaking about the same same things. And I will bet you, Annabel, that if two years from now or three years from now, you go and you do another, you know, um, sample or mm-hmm. research or whatever, you know, a study it is, you'd pretty much find the same results yeah, yeah. again. So then, what was what 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 then of a serious nature? Does, and, and I want to come to the, the, mm-hmm. the report itself, but, but I, I can't but ignore that snapshot that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. three years ago, today, and if, we'd done, if we do one two years from now, pretty much the same. And, mm-hmm. and that says either things are changing very, very, very slow or things are not changing um, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, in, in the industry. So, so what, what, what's wrong then? In, with with this picture, what's what's wrong? Because there's there's no give in the kind yeah. of results we're getting. Yeah, Denzel, I think first and foremost, what's important about these kind of um, research studies is that we are building a body of knowledge okay. we currently yeah. don't have yeah. a body of knowledge, right? So we have to first find the data, present the pictures, understand. What questions we are trying to resolve? What are we? What are we solving for? Mm, mm. And if you don't have a scientifically a, sci- a scientific approach to the question that you're trying to solve for, yeah. it just becomes fast. We just, you know, it's sentimental. It's perceptions. Mm. So, and there's no grounding that is based in research that can support what you would want to take to industry and what you'd want to take to stakeholders. And what you want to take to government from a policy making, from a regulatory legislative perspective. Yeah, yeah. So so these these two pieces of research are exactly that, that we are building, we are seeking to build on a, a body of knowledge for the industry. That as we grow, as the, the understanding and the awareness within the industry grows around the importance of this kind of research for practitioners specifically. Mm we are then able to to make the necessary arguments and point to specific pieces of evidence and portfolios of evidence mm. that support the forward, mm. right? And in order for us to see this difference between research, there's all these issues around longitudinal studies that you have to give research time. It has to be over a, a period of time so that you're able to to really look at whether or not year on year or biannually or at whatever period that you're doing this research, you are seeing where the results are staying the same. Mm. And that might not be a good picture because you say, okay, now that we've got this knowledge, what, what does it mean? What does it say? Who mm. are we talking to about understanding what this industry means and what our responsibility to changing these issues mm. at an industry level needs to be, right? Mm. And, and I'll give an example. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably one of my colleagues is listening. I, I was invited to an evening event in Kingstown, right? Mm. And my first thought was, I need to organize a babysitter, <sighs> right? Yeah. yeah. This is what women need to deal with. My first thought is, 
can I make it if it's during the week, the school tomorrow, I am a single mom, I need to think twice about confirming my availability. Mm. It's very different for if a male colleague had to be asked to do this. And mm. this is what the study is saying, that the considerations that women have to make about being practitioners and professionals in this industry are very different to our male counterparts. Mm. And unless we understand that social construct that professionals and practicing practitioners are operating in, we will continue to perpetuate what this incorrect picture is. Mm. Because nobody is saying, here's what the research is telling us we need to do. These are the recommendations from the research. These are the issues that need to, to be located in either industry strategies, in, in government strategies, in policy, in research, in whatever for, shape or format that seeks to bring about the redress that we want to see, that creates this leveling and this mm. equity and this representation that supports women being actively involved and participating in this career. Mm. Ch- we've chosen mm. to be in these careers. Mm. But the, the, the environment in which we are operating in is not supportive of our ability to continue to operate in these careers mm. and in these professions and to be practitioners. Sure. Then, then Annabelle, I, I'm, I'm just picking up on, on some of the threads that you, you, you're talking about and, and the examples that you're using, and then I'm going to make reference to, to, to the sure. research and the study as well. When I, when I look at the research and the study, we, we're talking about accomplished women. Mm-hmm. We're talking about competent and, and, mm-hmm. and capable women. And and very deliberate language sometimes where women are concerned. It's it's not women and and we we always say you know there are there are enough competent and capable women out there to be doing the job. Mm-hmm. We don't say there are enough women out there capable of doing the job. Mm-hmm. And and when mm-hmm. we say and when we talk about men, we generalize. We don't say there are enough competent men and and capable men out there. We almost mm-hmm. assume that you know uh, men exactly. women. Okay. Men can come as they are. Yeah. Women, women have to come accomplished, capable, yeah. and competent. And and Indeed. and when there's a senior appointment, uh, men can can come and be groomed into the position. The women mm-hmm. still need to be accomplished, competent, and capable that they can do the job. Mm-hmm. It's it's the language to that for me is strikingly different. Mm-hmm. 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 Indeed, indeed, mm. and and and. So, so this is the problem that um, generally women are experiencing about mm. having to prove ourselves. Mm. In essence, we are required. There's an expectation. Yeah, that, that's that what the language says. Ourselves. Yeah, that's yes, that's what the language says. Mm. And and so bringing that that narrative into the research, it's the same thing mm. that the 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 genderization, if there's such a term, yeah. of role. Um, within the live music industry is also creating these sort of two playing fields yeah. for for men and female. So, for example, one of the respondents talks about how, you know, when you, when you come into a studio, mm. what is the first thing that uh, a male producer will think I'm supposed to do? They're going to think I must be a backup singer. They're going to think I must be uh, or, or the singer. Right? Yeah, yeah. And somehow these roles have become very um, boxed. Women's roles within the industry have become boxed. Mm. They'll never assume that Annabelle <laughs> coming in mm. has got technical abilities to be on the mixing desk. Yeah. They'll never assume that Annabelle coming in could equally be the producer. Yeah. Right? Or, so or, or, somebody who's, or somebody who's coming in and rolling out the cables and connecting the cables exactly. and, and, yeah, and doing exactly. all of that. Yeah. Exactly. They, they would never automatically think that those roles are available to them. Even the extent to which, interestingly, in the, in the study, it talks about how even when, as a woman, you want to take up what is perceived to be a, male, a male-centric a male instrument, mm. right? Like the, the bass guitar or like the um, or drums or uh, the horn. Mm. You'd never, and, and we can see how women who take up those particular male-centric or what are considered to be male-centric instruments 
uh, you know, it's like a big thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wow, she's playing the bass guitar. <laughs> wow, she's playing. You know, like, mm. what, why should I not be playing? It's, it's a first, a, yeah, it's yeah. a first. Mm. <laughs> right? It's yeah. a first. Wow, look, a woman, look, a woman can also do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was still in 2024. I was still thinking that way. I was still assigning instruments, in, mm. inanimate objects, genders. I was saying that a gender discrimination, yeah. Even in musical instruments, so it, it's ludicrous the extent to which our lives are, are are so gendered in everything that we do within this industry. Yeah. But it's a, a micro representation of what's happening across society. Yeah, so it's not unique in a sense when you think about it that women still have to you know, move into spaces that were are predominantly or historically considered to be male spaces and the kind of challenges and hurdles that they would need to overcome to prove themselves capable and competent and, and up to the task, right? Yeah. And so, and so these, these stereotypes and these, uh, the way that we frame and language and language what we do and what women would have access to mm. remains problematic. And, and that, unless you have studies yeah. like this, sorry, James, unless you have studies like this, you'll never actually understand the depth of the problem because it will always be seen to be just uh, uh, sort of stimming the surface and we're not delving deep enough. Sure, because the, the point you, you're making there about, about um, uh, gender um, and, and that particular example is in the report where it talks about uh, disparities in representation. Women underrepresented in technical roles, the ones yeah. we've just, and then overrepresented in the singing and the songwriting yeah. Yeah. aspects of things where, where you, like you said, somebody would walk in and they'd think you part, you know, you're going to be back up and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and singing. What, what are some of the good things? And I'll come back again to, to some yeah. of the other things that need to be fixed, but what are some of the good things and, and overrepresentation maybe is good, you know, mm-hmm. uh, from, mm-hmm. from, from, from mm-hmm. the, from the bar where women are starting, you know, yeah. hey, at least we've achieved something. Um, wh- what, yeah. what are some of the other good elements that, that have come out of the report that, you know, you, the findings are, are saying to you mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. maybe change, you know, maybe even a, a, a direction to where the stats are or, you know, um, the, 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 the kind of engagement, yeah, more sure. women are entering the space. What, what are some of the other maybe good things that, that, that are showing up? Denzel, I wish I would. I wish I could say that there, there's, you know, there's a balance between the positive and the negative in terms yeah. of what the survey has um, has has shed a light on. Yeah, yeah. But but unfortunately, because we're dealing with such deeply entrenched societal constructs, um, it's it's not it's not a good picture. I do think though, what is good about it is that now we know, and now how do we carry the conversation to those spaces? Right to the studios, yeah. have conversations with promoters about the issues of safety for women working late at night. Yeah. You know, um, Shannon Modi last year at the panel talked about, I mean, besides one of the reasons why she left South Africa eventually around issues of safety, while she was performing late, um, I think it was at a one of the big um, jazz festivals in South Africa. Mm. And so, you know, we perform, we perform, blah, 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 and we just perform, and then at the end of it, Either the men stay around or, you know, everybody stays around after the show. But nobody ever gives consideration to between where I'm performed, between the stage and my car. Yeah. Is it safe enough for me to trust that I can walk alone to get there? And so security is not provided. That is never consideration around how do we make sure that our employees remember as as and one of the recommendations is about labor regulation. Yeah. That our employees who are here to do a service, who are giving us a service, are then catered for from a security point to at least get to your car safely. Mm. And so women have had to make decisions on do I take that pain do I not take that pain job? Do I take that gig or do I start using an oops? Mm. I, it might be just a kilometer between the stage and my car, mm. but it's still a distance that I feel that I'm exposed and I'm not safe. And nobody's looking out for me. Nobody, well, none of my band members are going to make sure that I get to my car safely mm. because that's not how we think. Mm. And I don't think women either want to be mollycoddled, you know, to say, okay, every performance now you must be, somebody must be holding your hand like you need a chaperone. No. Mm. All we're saying is that that space needs to be safe enough 
for me to do what I would normally do. And, and that is to get to my and, car. And talking about that space as well, it's not like a corporate environment where, no, you know, no. you're working in an office. It, it, it's people who are, you know, consuming, dancing and, and all sorts exactly. of things. And, you, you know, you, you're going to end in the middle of the night. And, you know, exactly. yeah, you're, dealing exactly. with a, you're dealing with different folk at that particular time. What, exactly. what, how do you fix it? Is it, is it as, as, you know, also the language of, of what the, the studies, you know, just mm-hmm. casually talking about is gender quotas, gender blind, you know, auditions, mm-hmm. legislative requirements, mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and all of those, those things that maybe are necessary to you, do you have to, mm-hmm. or is it something that one needs to begin to then seriously engage if it's not fixing itself? I, th- I think it's it's definitely the latter day. So I think mm-hmm. it's, it requires serious engagement. It requires serious industry um, awareness raising around the problems that, or well, the experiences that women are having yeah. in 2024 in South Africa, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it does require a, a level of resourcing. And when I say resourcing, it does mean then that if I'm a musician and I go to perform late at my show starts at 10 o'clock, that at the end of that show, that as a promoter, you are thinking about, let me make sure that she gets home safely. Because we know that we live in a, in a crime burden country. We know that we live in, in, a, in a country that with high levels of gender-based violence. So why are we not thinking about those things in our budgeting and our planning mm. when we know that we're expecting to have female members, band members, and backup singers, and singers, and lead singers, mm. right? Why are we not already including those kind of, of um, activities as part of our budgeting process? I, I, I mm. as in being in charge of Samba, I need to think about making sure that staff is safe, mm. I comply with health and safety regulations, mm. you mm. know, et cetera, et cetera. Why is it that we're not extending that requirement to these spaces? Yeah. They are not informal spaces. We know that the creative economy does make contribution towards GDP, but yet we are ex- the creative economy professionals and being the artists themselves are excluded from protection and cover from a labor relations point. Mm. And this has been a conversation for decades. <laughs> I was, wait- I, I, I was waiting for that. I knew the terminology was coming for <laughs> decades. When you, when you paused, Annabelle, I knew that's the word coming for decades. I hope my desperation came through as well. <laughs> it did. It definitely did. Annabelle, what, what, what benefit, you know, and, and like you said, you've got to chip at this thing maybe, you yeah. know, all the time and, and constantly work at it. The, you know, there was a, this workshop that was hosted on, in April, uh, 9th of April, I think, also this year, uh, the Business of Music Workshop, Joburg Theatre, and also then mm-hmm. based a lot on some of the findings that came out mm-hmm. of that 21-22 uh, mm-hmm. commissioned work by, by Samro and mm-hmm. anticipation then of this. You know, um, what 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 kind of have, are you beginning to see the impact of the workshops and the infiltration that that is being deliberately made so that you know um, music mm-hmm. creators have the necessary skills and the tools you know to just to navigate in these com- right. complex things around maybe contract comprehension registration with CMOs um, right. you know right. and th- and those kind of things. Um, then the first and foremost, I think our responsibility as a, um, a CMO and just for listeners, a collecting management, um, or collective management organization, yeah. is that we, we have um, an ongoing responsibility to raise awareness, to educate, to inform. Yeah. I think that responsibility will, will never be, we will never break the, the, reach the top of the mountain and say we're done because we always have a new generation coming into the industry. And so there are, and, and legislation changes, practice changes, you know, we, there's conversations around AI and generative AI and how that is going to change or revolutionize the industry. So there's always going to be a responsibility to make sure that we are raising awareness as we get this information and as we, you know, we understand better from, a, from the issues that we're trying to grapple with or that mm. we're grappling with. But equally so, uh, we will only also be able to, as we continue to do these studies, we will see the impact of whether or not these these issues are landing, mm. right? Whether or not industry 
stakeholders are taking heed of what these re- what these reports are saying, and so having platforms like uh, like this current platform and yeah. many other platforms to talk about these issues is part and parcel of the journey that Samro is saying. We want to lead in this area because nobody else is having these conversations about this this kind of microcosm of the industry mm. and how we, we really want to be champions for changing and shedding light and empowering stakeholders across the spectrum to mm. understand the issues that women are, are dealing with. I can tell you that with the sample size of just about 350 mm. participants yeah. or respondents to the sample, this could be extrapolated to mean that women working in the industry are feeling this way. Mm, mm. Right? Yeah. We, are, we are talking about pink tax. We are talking about the issues of considerations from a, do I take this job, do I not? And again, you know, pay parity. And again, the yeah. disparity within how women are, are compensated or remunerated vis-a-vis the, the male counterparts. So it is, it is small and gradual. I think we have to... It's, it's, you know, we're in it for the long haul. It's not, by no means a sort of just a once-off and this is the second iteration of the study, but we have to repeat the study and we have mm. to, um, you know, ask the same questions and track the responses over time to see if the picture is, is changing or not. But at this stage, it's too early days to see if we yeah. this study and the conversations that we have in border with the industry are landing and the change that we expect to see is happening. Sure. And and you're talking then about the, the three seventy the three fifty seven respondents yes. uh, that you would have had. Uh, yes. the, the percentages are a little disturbing. Seventy seventy yes. percent had observed gender discrimination, eighty percent that the agenda influenced how they were treated. So you know yes. If if the numbers were were lower, but those those are high numbers, and yeah. and this is a this is a, a a I must I must say this is pretty much a a good polling system. Uh, the mm-hmm. respondents mm-hmm. of three fifty seven, it would give you mm-hmm. a good feel and a good yeah. take. But the numbers of seventy and eight percent, you know, in 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 as much as maybe they were expected, um, they the, disturbing in their nature by the by yeah. the by the by the extent to which the percentages then show showcase themselves. Yeah, shocking, shocking. Mm. No, no, totally shocking. And I think it's it's a huge indictment on, um, on on captains of industry. It's a mm. huge indictment on how we are, how the industry is perpetuating these narratives and these stereotypes, and creating spaces that are still not supporting the participation of women broadly, mm. right? Mm. And and until we confront these issues head on and until we confront these issues and challenge the powers that be, the decision makers, the gatekeepers around what needs to change and why it needs to change. Mm. We are going to be, I can tell you Denzel, in five, ten years time, we will be having the same conversation about how nothing has changed because the decision makers are not seeing the benefit or the need to make sure that these spaces are are supportive of the participation of women broadly, and I guess sometimes you know, you know, you remember that uh, that that Kenya uh, campaign that women were saying that until politicians understand the impact of certain decisions on women, yeah. well, the wives are going to withhold wife's yeah. duty, right? Yeah, yeah. So I miss women as well, and I think this is probably a call out to, to how we need to own the story. Yeah. As uh, and I'm talking, I say we because I am working in the industry, but I'm not sort of a performer. Yeah. I'm not a composer. I'm not a a, a singer. I don't play any instrument yeah. to save my life. But unless we really um, insist on the change that we want to see, the men are not going to insist on that change either. Yeah. Right. And, so and we have to to see ourselves as being part of. We have to shift the needle. Nobody else is going to do that unless we start declining jobs. And I and I'm saying this. With, with caution in my mind, mm-hmm. because I, I understand, you know, a salaried employee like myself as being somebody whose livelihood depends on gigs and performances. But 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 something has to give. Sure. That's what I'm saying. And, yeah. and let's let's just talk about then, you know, the institutions that that. 
put people in this particular industry, yes. um, universities and and the thing. And then there's there's a there's a a moment when it says most universities do not prepare music students effectively for professions yes. uh, and professional readiness. And then it just goes further to say music industry also lacks the forming structures of apprenticeship, which is the learning yes. the yes. formal learning yes. component and internship, and then also. It it makes a makes a finding that the majority of active musicians are self taught. Yes, taught. So yes. so so I suppose one needs to also go to these institutions and say, why why are you not engaging women in these aspects where they don't only need to play the flute, but they also yes. need to be yes. engaging all the other dynamics of what the industry yes. is. Yes, yeah. indeed. Pointing out those things of the technical and the and the the other aspects of what the what it is, and right. I, I assume right. that even at that stage, um, Annabelle, the 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 narrative that men will roll up the cables and not women, and women will yeah. just stand yeah. on the stage and play the flute, that particular yeah. narrative is already you know engraved there already. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Denzel, I think the. the um the conversation around academia and academia's role in supplying the industry with professionals across across the field of the music industry. Yeah. Gosh, it takes me back to, to when I started in the industry. There, there was a program called Create SA. Mm. And what Create SA taught, sought to do was to develop the, the qualification framework for different different roles within the industry. It was around the technical, it was around mm. the business broadly, it was around, you know, sort of the administrative role and how and how we've had these conversations about how do you professionalize this industry, how do you professional professionalize this industry. You know, and, and, and I think that and that it, it got sort of assumed into what is now Cap Theta. But but it's it kinda like lost in my understanding and where I sit. It we've lost the yeah. the positioning of the role of training and education in the industry and we are not meeting industry needs you know we're not mm. preparing gradu- mm. graduates to fulfill skill gaps within the industry you know and and we see to your point earlier on about most musicians will talk about how they're self-taught you mm. know they are and we see it as well in our stats just from a member point you know that we don't have enough members who are Female publishers, for example, right? Um, and so it also talks about transformation in the industry. We don't have enough female uh, members either. Mm-hmm. So we still go in that respect because th- there are not enough composer, authors, and publishers within the industry broadly, mm-hmm. let alone they be members of SAMRA or not, but mm-hmm. broadly, mm-hmm. there are not enough female um, representatives in those particular categories who would then also be, be, be some members. There are a few, but I don't think, I think it's also an area of, of, of focus that, that requires us to continuously to highlight and raise. And, and I know that the other organizations, you know, um, Sandra is not the only one who's concerned about transformation and representation, mm. but I, I know that it has to, again, be an industry-wide response. There has, there has to be change. Yeah. And and so we've got limited time. I've got limited time in my role at Sambro. How to, as women, to our uh, sort of our introductory conversation, how do we make sure that while we do have these opportunities in the spaces, in the roles that we occupy, to at least begin to make an indent in one way or the other? Yeah. I, I, I couldn't but not notice, uh, Annabelle, the no- Norwegian Ministry of Foreign yes. Affairs, Yes. Uh, the Royal Norwegian Embassy, and then and then Samro itself, yes. is and then the, the first question came to mind is, in in one way I do appreciate you know uh, foreign entities and foreign countries mm-hmm. getting involved mm-hmm. in some of these you know aspects where you know they they want you know th- they will play a role and they particularly mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. the money to engage something like this and mm-hmm. you've got to ask them but um, to to get to the research and to get to, like you said, body of knowledge. And the more you do, the more you can put it in people's faces and showcase. Mm-hmm. And, and you could do more, not just in live music, but you could do so much more. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just assuming when I saw that and I didn't see any locality. Um, and mm-hmm. when I say locality, mm-hmm. I'm talking right. about maybe, right. you know, uh, 
people with deep pockets in this country, right, you know, right, presenting, right. you know, their yes. their their wallets for for something like this, is it is it just a, a general issue that you would have, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that um, South Africans in general don't want to, and you've got to go big, borrow and steal to, you know, to to you know friendly embassies yeah. that are yeah. sitting overseas. Yeah. Oh, Denzel. Oh, gosh. I need to come into the studio for this I've, I've, I've understood you. I've understood you properly. <laughs> you see how, how I've totally understood you, Anna. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but but, but to, to answer in a, in, a, in, a, in a very short way. So yeah. South Africa had the privilege of uh, post-94 being sort of the focus of, of overseas development agency support, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you had the Swedish, you had the Norwegians, you had you still have the French, you still have a few of them in, in one That's way, in, in some capacity or the other. And they're getting but less and less and less, yeah. They are getting less and less and less and less. Yeah. So the Norwegians, to, to, to their credit, had, had worked with, had funded music particularly early on, gosh, there was a program called Mino. Mm. And Mino was also exactly this. How do you support the music industry broadly, mm. right? And it was Norwegian funding. And then uh, sort of the relationship then moved into a similar relationship with uh, the Norwegian embassy. And what came out of that then was Conflict to Say, mm. where it was around live performance, live music, the live music sector. Because we know that outside, after you record as a musician, your, your next, your, your opportunity to grow and generate income and revenue is around your ability to perform live performances. That's it. Yeah. So the live music sector is really the bread and butter of of musicians. And, and, and you'll be surprised recording. you'll be surprised how many artists have to- told me that actually that that puts you know money and food yes. on the table. Yeah. Yes. Because I mean if you think about it the, from a recording point there, there's you know the obligations around record labels and and the artists that they've signed on but really, where, where artists make more money yeah. is in live performances. That's it. The more you perform, the, the more you're able to take home, right? Mm. And so the focus then for the Norwegian slash summer partnership through the program that is Concert SA was around funding live music. And so research and, and documentation was one of the areas that was identified in that program as being important. And, and why is that, Denzel? Mm. The Global North understands the value of the creative industries, of the creative economy, of art, culture, and heritage, yeah. and that you actually need to put money into preserving, conservation, support, programming. <laughs> it is not rocket science. Yeah. We are not it's 101. It. <laughs> it's 101. Mm. <laughs> exactly, right? Mm. So the Global North has, has always been supportive of and when I say Global North, I talk about, particularly from Europe, the European countries, mm. be it IFAS, the French, be it British Council, be it the Dutch Embassy, the Norwegians, the Swedes. In what, so they've always supported the South African creative industries, arts and culture, for years, for years, pre- and post-democracy, mm. you know. And you hear people lament the fact that you know, we used to have five in community art centers because this is where money was going to make sure that at development level, these community art centers needed to be like at your back door. Where do you need? I mean, you talk about the funders and the fubers, you talk about Rock's Drift, you talk about yeah. Magna Theater in Cape Town, like so many of these organizations that were grassroots NGO organizations that were supporting. The, the, the growth of the talent of South African art culture practitioners across the spectrum. Mm. Those don't exist because government, and the, we understand government resource challenges, we're not saying that we don't, mm. but those, those the resourcing for those particular initiatives and spaces and programs dwindled over the years. And what have we seen? The, old, the, 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 the ODA money that was really targeted to culture has dwindled. Mm. And the Norwegian embassy was the, the last of that that you know the last of the the European Scandinavian countries that said we are going to focus on not that the others are not doing it anymore yeah. but the, yeah. the value the extent to which the Norwegian embassy had committed to supporting music specifically in South Africa I think was laudable and to some, in some instances what these countries were saying is through the bilateral agreements through cultural diplomacy 
Let's, we will match you. Government, you mm. need to do something. Mm. Mm. Right? Government, put, put one rent, we will put the other rent. Yeah. Yeah. And if the other rent is not there, what happens? Then yeah. it means that the government is not curious about the, the role of culture and cultural diplomacy and what it means, what creativity and the creative economy means for countries, for society. And then they left. Wow. But we said as, as Sambro that we will definitely uh, keep Concert SA as a mm. program um, because we understand its benefit and impact for members and the industry broadly. And we've seen how live performance venues have closed over the years. Uh, Denzel, we lament the orbits and the kippies and the yeah. baseline. Yeah. You know, we, we lament all of those because it does require money, money to keep them alive, and it does require audiences. Yeah, and 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 not not just to, withstanding this the social part of our of our of our life. You know that mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. even artists need to keep and be aware of that too because. Yes. Um, you bring in the element of crime, you bring in the element of this and that and whatever it is, and then suddenly people are, are saying, well, you know what, I'd rather watch it on TV because if I just exactly. stepped outside exactly. of my house. And that begins exactly. to feed into, you know, that yeah. industry shrinking yeah. and shrinking and shrinking and yeah. people finding yeah. it harder and harder, you know, to yeah. to to put these things up because um, am I going to leave my house at 11 o'clock at night to go and be downtown in Johannesburg to watch some brilliant thing and then risk my life yep. in the drive home. Yep. I don't know if I want to do that. Indeed, indeed. Interestingly, I heard a very interesting term today. I was in, a, in one session this afternoon and they were talking about how one of the trends is around um, sort of a hermit society yeah. where more and more people are choosing to stay indoors because you've got access to Netflix, you've got yeah. access to that subscription service, you've got access to e-commerce, and, and you know, you can order stuff sitting in your couch, mm. that I don't want to take the effort, and within a crime-ridden society and a grime-ridden city, why am I going to waste my time just to drive through Rampenton and downtown Joburg and go to the market theater, for example, when, when and, I'm confronted with all the... And features. that's where Kippies was. That's where Kippies was, yeah. right? Was it Kippies is an amazing space? Yes. But if 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 city fathers are not focused on taking care of the cultural assets that exist through the facilities that are there, you will never have a vibrant city that is both work and play. Yeah. What what do you do after work? You want to keep people in the city. You want to have a nice economy. I mean, you travel and you go to these amazing cities, and cities are buzz at night mm. because it's it's safe. You know, you, you're mm. comfortable walking around at night. That is not the case in South Africa. And what, what we've seen over time, Denzel, is mm. that the ability of, of, of clustering creative, creative spaces, creative facilities, creative businesses in city spaces, then creates this sort of extension around mm. it's safe to go out. We want to go into those spaces because they are changing the face of the city. But if we don't understand the value and the impact of what creative industries and creators are able to do to enrich mm. your city space, to enrich society, to enrich our daily experiences as human beings, we, will, we are losing the plot and we've lost the plot. Let, a, let alone a conversation about culture. Um, exactly. And, and, yeah. You see, Annabelle, why you need to be in studio here? I'm, I'm there. I'm there. Anna, <laughs> Annabelle, I'm going to say thank you so much. And, and I'm going to end on that. Um, you know, I'm going to keep it as an, uh, an invitation and it's going to come. And we'd love to bring you into the studio. And, you know, because there's, we, we're beginning to touch on the other aspects of the industry mm-hmm. that yes. are so, so important. I mean, tonight we're talking about a, a survey and research and whatever it is. But there are so many components yes. that just lie next to this industry that speak to culture, that speak to Indeed. everything else. And hence, hence, Annabelle, you need to come back. Thank you, Denzel. I've enjoyed the conversation. Thank I will you. definitely come back. Thank you so much, Annabelle. Appreciate Thanks. it. Annabelle uh, Labetta, Samro CEO, talking to us there about, um, you know, yeah, a survey done about women in the industry uh, and in the live industry, musical and why it's so tough for them there. Well, it's tough in every every sector for women. And, um, um, you know, um, survey after survey has indicated that. You've been listening to a Power 98.7 podcast. For more podcasts, visit power987.co.za 
or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.